Man, it was a great welcome back to the Keys for me. You know, I just got here. Holy moly, day one, muttons, sails, and, and big dolphins. You know, stepping out of the woods, the, the weather couldn't have been better. But all in all, for just the first couple days getting out there, I was super happy. the blue presented by yellowfin with captain scott walker and captain steve roger scott what have you been up to tell you what i'm so glad you got out of the woods oh yeah i've been landscaping you miss me <laughs> yes i have i'm glad i didn't have to help you landscape you uh left ocean city in august so what, for two months you know, you're setting up your tree stands but when do you actually start seeing the deer that you want to uh you know, hunt. It, it usually it usually takes that cold weather to get them animals moving around. A lot of those big deer that we're trying to shoot, they're like 200 pounders, and those bucks are running around making scrapes and trying to find the ladies they want to hang out with. Um, so that cold weather really, really makes it right uh, for, for them big bucks to move. Um, we're just trying to shoot big deer. You know, we're trying to shoot four and a half, five. How, how far back had you finally seen one that you really want to hunt with a trail cam or something? Well, the one big eight I killed, I, I never seen him before. So um, he came out of nowhere. Yeah, you come out of nowhere. Was there one you were hunting for a while? Uh, I, was, I, was, I was looking for this big eight I had with a little, had a hook, like a, like a fish hook coming off one of his, his uh, G2. I really wanted to find him, but man, he, he's a tough deer. I've been after him for like three years. <laughs> and, and he knows it, right? Yeah, he knows. <laughs> it, it's been a successful year. You know, I shot a really nice eight. I shot a nice uh, 10 point. He was a little bit young. I wish I'd have let him go another year, but he was out there at like 250 yards, and it was a split second decision, you know? It's cool, I gotta get you up there, man. I, I enjoy the hunting, I enjoy the fishing. I like anything outdoor. Anything Cross me outdoors. no chiggers and ticks, I'll come up there. Well, then you need to wait till it gets cold. <laughs> if it's hot, there's mosquitoes, <laughs> chiggers. I just don't get it. And ticks. <laughs> We're full of fuel, and we got brand new four blade props on here. So I don't know what's, what to expect. I didn't get out yesterday. Well, it's a little breezy, so let's just try to find some bait and stay close and see All what right, we, we can get. We got everything on here. We got the kites. We got, we can, let's go catch something, cat. All right, we got those We're not in the woods anymore! No, sir, we're out of the woods. Oh, get her up! It's so easy now for you to just leave South Carolina, come back down here, and get on your cell phone, talk to your buddies. And, you know, right off the bat, we need bait. And how long? Five minutes after we leave the dock, we set up on a, a little spray of ballyhoos. Your buddy said there's a there's thick in this area. And we're Sabique and ballyhoos as fast as you can wind them in. Yeah. I mean, we've been gone, we haven't been in Key West, either of us, since uh, June. And in 15 minutes on the ocean, we are, our, our live well was full of ballyhoos. Sabiki, to tie Sabiki on, you catch him 10 times as fast. Which Sabiki you want, the red thing? Uh, no. Every time I've ever caught a ballyhoo on a Sabiki, it's been a tangled freaking mess. It won't, mess. it won't, trust me. Pop off the bottom one closest to the lead. And what lead am I using, no lead? Oh uh, yeah, you gotta have lead. I'll find it. Trust got me. It. Always got I quit using hair hooks on them last year, tournament fishing. All right, Kyle. Why, hey, that's why I like fishing with you, Scotty. You're always up on the latest and greatest achievements. Because let me tell you something. Anytime I've ever used a Sabiki rig I, on the Ballyhoo, it's been a nightmare. You will not have a problem. I don't know, I'm with you. So get rid of the last hook. Yep. Take the last one off so you can grab the leg quick. Follow me. Yeah, so you ain't scared of the hook? No. Nope. Everywhere we went the whole week, Ballyhoo's were everywhere. I, I mean, really enjoyed uh, that, that Sabiki trick you showed me. Um, because normally I never would see when I would try to catch you know, cigar minnows or pinfish with a sabiki, if a ballyhoo got on there, it was usually just a mess. You know, I was so mad because it'd make a tangle. Three dollars. But what you, away. what you showed me was, you actually just take that, uh, take that uh, bottom hook off and just troll that thing across the top of the water. And we were doing three, twos and threes and fours at a time um, of those ballyhoo. Well, you kind of freaked me out when you, you know, we did our checklist. We got this, we got that, we got this, we got that. And since we got out there in the first five minutes, you where the shrimp? <laughs> Where's the shrimp? <laughs> I had bought ballyhoo hooks and, and floats, and I was like, oh, no. But then I remembered, you know, I, I, I wasn't even using shrimp for ballyhoos anymore. All right, that's the secret walker move right there. You get rid of the bottom hook, and he guarantees you don't get a tangle. You cast it past him, keep your tip up high, and just let it sweep through the one foot of water. Sweep through one foot. All right, that's what we're going to do. See that? Where's the D-hooker? 
All right, grab that lead and you won't have to worry about getting hooked. If you just sit there and de-hook my bait, I think we can bang away. I'm telling you, you won't. You can catch double headers all day long. What? Do not, you don't need squid or ballyhoos or nothing. No squid, no shrimp, just right through them. Don't get greedy, two at a time is plenty. Come on. Oh, that's a cutie. That's candy right there, son. I need you to grab the lead next time. It's quicker. All right, I'm the lead grabber? Yeah. All right. You got the other well working? Because you know we're going to have to do a little pancake on that stuff. There we go. I'm going to get quicker than that, my friend. Ocean Reef. Ocean Reef, brother. You got to love them boys who do nothing but sailfish. <laughs> they find out all the tricks. Yep. Oh, look at the value. Not bad for a 10 o'clock in the morning start. We were uh, chasing thread fins so much, the ballyhoos get on them eventually. We learned how to catch the ballyhoos. Almost had you a four banger, Captain. It's all that. A lot quicker than trying to find a little teeny weeny piece of shrimp over and over oh, and over again. Not, <laughs> That's the only way to fly right there. You done showed me something with it. Spear one's gonna grab a heck out of them. We hair hook all the bait we can first because those are gonna be the bait that lasts all day long. Mm -hmm. When it comes three o'clock, you see that last sail, you don't reach in the live well and grab a ballyhoo that's looking at you like, I'm done, buddy. Yeah, and, <laughs> you know, when you throw the net on those other those other ballyhoo we caught after we hair hooked a bunch, you see by the end of the day, half of them are dead. You know, they can't handle, once you put them in that net, a lot of the scales get knocked off and they don't survive the whole day of riding around. Yep, you're gonna use those first, use them for chum, and uh, when it comes late in the day, you get back to those ones that hair hooked and it's like they first got caught. They're fully, uh, they're healthy, and got all their scales, and they'll, they'll jump when you cast them in front of a fish. That's all it takes. The old bucktail. Little flash of boo. Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you in part by Mercury Marine, celebrating 75 years of marine excellence. Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. And by Under Armour. Seagar and Ameritrail. Get him, baby. What'd you have to do? Put it down? The bucktail, baby. <laughs> Supper? Yeah, come on, be a big black. <clears throat> <clears throat> Black Rupa! Ho oh, ho! Why wouldn't it be a mutton snapper, baby? Yeah! Oh, mutton? Big old mutton. There you go. The old bucktail. Little flash of boo. There we go. There's one. <laughs> All right, he's going in the cooler. Let's drop, drifting the value on the bottom while we're working the surface. Let me see him, buddy. There you go. That'll eat. It's always gonna be my, my big black. The way he took off, I thought he was. Here we go. I don't think I'm even gonna share that one. No, man. I'm hungry. I haven't got to catch a fish by myself for a while. As long as you bought, you can drift anywhere as long as it's not a rocky bottom. Just get something right on the bottom. That's where those muttons like to lay, right on the sand outside the edge of the rocks. You'll know right away if you're just hanging bottom and losing lots of jigs, it's not going to be worth your while, but just moving nice and slow like that. Just leave it set right down the bottom and wait. Every one of our shows, we're usually putting a couple muttons in the boat. No matter what we're fishing for, we're always putting something on the bottom. You always want to have a bait on the bottom. You know, um, it's just it's one more line out there and one more opportunity. There's been days when I had people that just want to catch sailfish. I got the full spread out, the kites up, the flat lines, and guess what? The sailfish ain't around. But what I do is I say, let me put a bottom rod down just to get action. And by the end of the day, we got a box full of nice fish that they were not really after, but that saved the day. So what I like to do, and you do the same thing is whenever we're out there in that deep water, always put a bait on the bottom. We were drifting along out of nowhere and catching these nice muttons. 
Oh, and, and if it's not a mutton, it's usually a, a red grouper, your favorite, that little... Uh... <laughs> Key West Rex Shark? You got it. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of them. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Yeah, you can have it. T -West, oh, you. T West Oceanic Shark. We don't, you know, we ain't caught one yet today. We That's right. Kinda wasn't right. normal. Atlantic Shark Nose. They're mutton sound for his best friends. It's not in the way. You know, you ain't getting tangled up. That that rod is going straight down when you're sail fishing mm -hmm. or yeah, you're you, drifting. Yeah, and to do that, you gotta you gotta adjust your weights every day. You can't if you, just because there's a six ounce weight on it at the end of the day. Next day you might need ten. Next day you might need four. So you always gotta have a variety of lead to work with. Because you just want you, you don't want it scoped out with your baits on the surface. Because you want the sail to be able to swim freely around the back of your boat. So you just make sure you get just enough weight, hold bottom, and keep that line going straight down off the tip. Yeah, and the best thing is, is they're great eating. Woo! I, I don't some... think I'd come visit you as much if we couldn't eat these fresh every night. Mutton? A little oh, red? No. It's, it's not real big. You know, he had a little punch at the beginning there, but he's he definitely cooperating now. I see color. A mutton. Yeah, I just saw a sail. Sail's under that frigate. There's How sail's under away? that frigate. Right there. See that frigate right there? Yeah. Watch. So there's, watch a, the there's dinner. Put the sail up again? Yeah. Oh, there he is again. The sail's under that frigate, dude. Why don't we wind everything in? He'll sink out. There you go. Leave the skin on him. Throw him right on the grill. Skin. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you, I'm so glad you introduced me to that. <laughs> That's the perfect one for it. Cook. He won't take too long to cook through. I haven't done that in a while there, Scotty. Well, they don't have buttons in South Carolina, do they? No. <laughs> that one looks like a little lane in them, a little yellow. You know why they pink? Look at all them shrimp in there. Crabs in there. Let's see what he got here. Look, a manta. Oh, that's a pretty one too. A pink tail like that. Another manta. Ooh, check it out. A calico crab. Calicos. Some yellow feet on him. Is that, that mantis shrimp? And that concludes your marine biology lesson for the day. Sandfish everywhere. Coming in the boat. He's down for hit me, is he? Not yet. Oh. Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you in part by Yeti Coolers, wildly stronger, keep ice longer. Simrad, go with confidence. And by Shimano, Costa Sunglasses, and Bass Pro Shops. If you're gonna to wanna to go with a fish are, you're gonna to need to do some trailering. Um, and the best way to do that is take the time, pick out a really, really nice trailer. I like this Ameritrail. It's a great trailer. It has a welded bunks, great axles. Uh, it's a super strong trailer that's tailor fit for your boat. And even with the very, very best trailer, you're still gonna have some routine maintenance you're gonna need to do. One of them is gonna need a jack. And not just any jack, you need a jack that is able to lift this trailer so you can change out the spare tire. Another thing to have is a spare tire. And not just a spare tire, this trailer comes with a spare hub. So what that means is if you have a bad bearing, you can pop this off, slide it right on there, and away you go. Um, a couple other things you're gonna need is a flashlight because incidents are gonna happen at night sometimes and you're gonna need to be able to see what you're doing. A grease gun, a tube of grease, keep those bearings lubed up. Another thing we like to do is we change our bearings every year. The reason we do that is so we don't have problems on the road. There's nothing worse than sitting on the side of the road, heading to this fishing destination, fish are biting, buddies are calling, and you're broke down. So you wanna take these few little steps and have this trailer ready to go, get on the road and get moving and get into those fish. Say hello. Oh, he's oh. so little. Oh, 10 pounder. Oh my God. That's awesome. Is that the 20 pound leader? Uh, it's a J. It's a little guy. As soon as he turns, we got him. Woo! Hey, why'd you leave your pole? That's what Double I header, baby, double header! I had to get away from it to get a bite. Double header!
You ate both of them. How's that possible? <laughs> You were sitting right here all day. <laughs> a lot of little sales around. It, it's a cool time of year. It's just when you see them small, I see them small. Uh, it, it's neat. I mean, as, as much as people always want to catch a big fish, a big group, or a big mutton snapper, or a big dolphin, it's kind of cool to catch a small sale because mm -hmm. pretty much all the sales you catch are big. Right. And it's rare to catch those little guys, and this is the time of year. And um, they're perfect little replicas. They've yeah. got the, everything's there. It's just a small little package. They're, and they fight, they jump. I mean, it's mm -hmm. killer little fish. Yeah. Um, we had a lot of tangles. I mean, we were tangled up like... The way the wind was blowing was quite, kind of odd. Like that cartoon my kid watches. <laughs> I mean, we were tangled. And, um, but, but that's what happens when the bite's kind of slow. You try to get one more line out, one yeah. more line out, one more line out. And those ballyhoo, you know, they kind of swim side to side, and, and the drift was a little different. Mm -hmm. um, but, but we hooked a bunch of fish. I, I know I lost at least three two or three well, sales. When they did come, we were getting uh, multiple bites. Yeah, that was, it's even more exciting, but I'm hooked up. But one of our odds I had out, he had eaten also or got tangled in. And you know, if I was tournament fishing, I would have cut, I would have had to make a decision immediately which rod to cut the line. And it still would have counted in tournament. It's, it's in the rules. I mean, make a decision, cut line, and then fight them on one pole only. Right. But I didn't want to leave that little fish swimming around with two more falling around. So this was fighting them on both poles. I just want to get a good, clean release. But if it's a tournament, you would have had to make that decision right then. Which of the two lines you're going to cut and hope that it, that's the one that's got him hooked up? Yeah, I didn't mind to tell the thing. Uh, you were coming in to help me out. Then you got, as soon as you got the gloves on, of course, that's when chaos hit. You had two big boys on going all over the ocean. Oh, there's a sail on the flat line. Big boy, boy coming in hot. I'll get this one cleared two up. Two of them, two of them. All right, you get, bite, you get a bite, you get a bite, you get a bite. Get bit? Yep. Oh, nice work. Those are full grown ones there. I got one cleared. Sandfish everywhere! Coming in the boat. Is he not gonna hit me, is he? Not yet. Oh. <laughs> look at that. Oh my god, look at him. I got me Charlotte Webb, who I got. The best thing you can do in that situation and, and is just to back the drag off and just let it happen. I was trying to give it to give you any sort of help, but it would happen so fast. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> That's it, you are those big blue mittens on. Like, yeah. uh, and I think they, they ultimately ended up sawing each other off, you know? And, and that's going to happen. Um, oh, yeah. You're going to fish multiple baits with sailfish come in in big watts. It's going to happen. Usually, if you have one guy on each pole, you can do the dance. But yeah. there's not much you can do with two gloves on. And Yeah. No, no, I, could, I, was, I was just standing there like this. <laughs> Six times, and then the other two circles around it. And just one of them days. There's one of those bad boys that finished up our trip. Those are some nice. November, Mahi's there. Want to see more of Into the Blue? Well, you don't have to wait for the show to be on. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or even our YouTube channel for full-length shows. We have some how-to videos, amazing pictures. We'd love y'all to come over, ask us some questions, post your own pictures, or just enjoy ours. See you there. Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you in part by Stable 360 Marine, complete corrosion protection for your fuel system. Bubba Blade, the ultimate sportsman's knife. The Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. Tailwalker Charters and Spear One Charters. There he is, oh, big fish. Oh, nice dolphin, two of them. All right, you're, you're baited up, you're baited up. There's another big one. That's the big one. Couldn't throw. Right in his mouth, dude. All right, that's the bull. Another one, another one, another one, another right. big one. When you come tight. That's beautiful. These are stud summer dolphins. Woo! Just keep on driving. Oh, you got a fat one on. I heard somebody yell dolphin. I was too busy getting you ready and keeping my eye on the thing, but. Uh, yeah, there was a bunch of really nice big mahi. I mean, these are great sized cows. I mean, obviously we didn't get a bull and I didn't see a bull, but there was at least another three of these guys swimming there. We um, pulled up on them. They were training down to the west, chasing the ballyhoos as fast as those little portal ballyhoos could go. And it was just a matter of pitching a bait out. We didn't, they didn't have to be great casts, although they were. <laughs> well, my cast landed, I think I landed in his mouth. I, I think it, I don't think it hit the water. And, well, on those light spinning rods, they got so much power. 
it's the whole thing. It's about going small and light and comfortable and easy to hold on to. And, and um, it just, you can fish all day and not get fatigued. I mean, all day long you can fight, stand up, uh, make casts, fight fish, and, and it's not gonna wear you out. Where were these in June, Stevie? I don't know, we needed them for that dolphin tournament with the wives. The girls are gonna be mad. I know. <laughs> Yeah, your daughter and my wife are both gonna say, what happened during the tournament? Here's one. Amahi. Oh, that's beautiful. You got him? Oh yeah. Oh, oh, good job, buddy. Going in the boat. Nice cow, huh? She's beautiful. Gonna need a bigger Yeti. Hammering on these fish, they're only 15, <laughs> 20 pounds, but we're running around in here with that 25 and 30 pound fluoro. Pretty sailfish. All right, buddy, there she is. Good job. Fatty, huh? Oh, so round. <laughs> Not really all that large, but fat. It is thick. I think I got you dinner. Bookends, baby. Mine was much nicer. Thank you, Scott. Good job. Great job, bud. All right, let's do it again. 